Okay. I got it. Got it. Quick. Um, I was um, I was asked by the Norwegian Masseur um, Association uh, if I could help them because they were painfully aware that massaging people did translocate the diseases. They actually were open about it and they said, yes, we know that. We can see that when we massage people, we push the diseases to others and we do not talk about it because we don't know what to do. You know, that is actually for most <clears throat> therapist associations. So I gave a course in Oslo for, for masseurs. <clears throat> and I thought, wow, this is uh, masseurs. I never, in a way, uh, had any much contact with them. But they were highly sensitive people. And uh, after one day, I, I did a demonstration. And I asked one of the more uh, prominent members, masseurs, to, to have a patience. We have this patient on the desk. And I asked him to then do an evaluation. And he did a very thorough, thorough evaluation about all the tensions in the body, the muscles, the and so on. And he found that the two legs were have a, a different length. And then I said, then you just open, as I had explained the first day, open the middle and invite Christ in. Uh, when I had... Um, and I lectured that the day before. There were quite a stir in the in the the, the, um, the participants because several of them were anti Christ, uh, as many are today. So they were very upset about this. And uh, so he did this, and then he waited ten seconds and re-evaluated the patient, and. He said, it is as if uh, I have been massaging for one hour. And he checked the legs and they have become even equal length. So this made such an impression uh, for all the participants that, um, that the Norwegian Masseur Association really have got a new, uh, a new um, insight into spiritual medicine and the middle uh, opening the middle we haven't talked very much about opening the middle i guess here have we andre we have been talking about the path the uh, nordic path but not this opening of the middle or have well, we it, yeah not not so much ari yes i mean if uh, you can just uh, go into details of this particular I can, topic yeah i question. can I can repeat it a little because when we start to fade and merge into the elemental world, there are two possibilities of action. We can either go on, go through the elemental world and reach the threshold and this higher spiritual world, the uh, etheric world, and, and higher devakanic or astral worlds. Or we can stay at the uh, point in the elemental world where we have come, and there perform our work or deeds. And this is actually very important, because... In the elemental world, we can perform what Rudolf Steiner called hygienic occultism in the first part of this elemental world, in the second part, mechanical occultism, and in the third or deepest part, uh, eugenic occultism. So um, this first... Um, level of the elemental world there where, where we can do 
hygienic occultism. That is what I was teaching the masseurs. So when they then massage patients, they can fade into them and then in and then find this middle, which they were very good at as a masseurs. I, I have changed my view on masseurs totally. They are so sensitive. I thought there were strong men and women who were uh, doing the muscles, you know, <laughs> but they are so uh, extremely sensitive. So they found the middle with no problems, the middle between the Luciferic elemental being and the Arimanic elemental being, which is about in the heart area, the sacred heart. Um, and then they uh, then they invite Christ in. They make this opening bigger. They sort of push the Luciferic elemental a little upwards and the Arimanic being a little downwards. And then they can they Christianize the elemental beings by inviting Christ into the middle between them. And this is what Rudolf Steiner uh, talked about and said was very important in times to come, which is now, that is to Christianize the elemental beings. And by doing that, you change the effect of them. A Christianized elemental being cannot cause disease. It cannot harm. It has a total different uh, appearance. And and um, and um, and and uh, appearance and effect in the world. Uh, so I think this is uh, what we can do on our, even if we maybe are not mature or ready to go through all the elemental world, we can on this way, this path, do the work of in inviting or bringing Christ into this middle. Yeah. That was a little from last time. So when we uh, when we have the past six times been talking about how to get go deeper and deeper into the elemental world, we can we can where we are actually bring Christ into the elemental world. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, we are hearing. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I have I have one interesting detail. Um so uh we know um this kind of exercises they were introduced by Rudolf Steiner in 1912. Yes. Uh, April 3rd. This is lecture number one. It was done in Finland, Helsinki. So mostly for uh, anthroposophists from Russia, or let's say from Russian Empire. So let's say Andre Daly was part of it, and um, so many friends, specifically Russian speaking. And, uh, and then a little later, he gave two addresses, at least probably one address. And in the end of these addresses, he uh, gave uh, uh, a meditation. And uh, it's not coincident, but you know, meditation is quite um, interesting because it relates to topic, to the topic. And I will read in German, but pro probably you will, you will understand. Um, so this is for um for evening so this concentration on heart so we should uh, imagine in the heart so we have a star which is radiates uh, light so and meditation is 
die Kraft meines Wortes, die Liebe meines Wortes, wohne in deiner Seele, wohne in you. In dir, I'm in dich, sorry. So, uh, Kannst du das noch mal lesen, André, bitte? Yes, uh, die Kraft meines Wortes, die Liebe meines Wortes, wohne in deiner Seele, wohne in dich, in dir, I'm sorry, in dir. Sorry for my German. But uh, of course, a person should imagine being of Christ, which is directly speaking to you. So uh, there is also meditation for the morning, uh, but you know I will put it in the, maybe I'm not sure if I can in the chat of our Telegram channel. So so in a more exact form. Yeah, it's it's an interesting area because it's specifically uh, a meditation to uh, receive or actually to receive yeah receive uh, uh, forces of Christ in the heart. Mm. of medita mm. and when you then think about that <clears throat> at steiner's time the part of the elemental world that was open was this uh first part that where you could do this hygienic occultism and the work how we do it is actually to invite christ into the heart of the patient or even all the device or the animal or even yourself So yes, that is how far he could go at that time. And today uh, we have to go further into the elemental world and through the elemental world. <clears throat> so how is that uh, work going? Uh, now I ask the group, how is um how is your work in going deeper into the elemental world going and have you done something at the point where you have come that is a question from me yeah dear friends you know how to raise your electronic hand uh so you should navigate uh your cursor or arrow in the bottom of your screen and there is button uh reactions click on reactions and there is um, another button raise the hand so but i know lois was first yeah lois go ahead unmute your machine please yeah go ahead okay a question for ara with the um healing forces of christ um, I have a girlfriend in Florida who's very, very ill, and she's very, very Christian. And is there a way to do this to help her because I'm not there? I was supposed to go down, but her condition keeps getting worse and worse. Um, and and I'm, I'd like to do something. You know, I feel like I can't be there. Is there a way to do this um, to help her? Yeah, not being there, you mean? Yes. Well, one of the things with the elemental world is, and, and, and that is today shown in uh, element physics, all the ele ele elemental particles, that distance does not actually matter. That is called the ghost effect when you have two elemental particles that have come from the same source. And even if they are a hundred light year away, they react exactly simultaneously. So that is possible if you then, but but that is important. Then you first go into at least some distance into the elemental world. You fade in at least as far as you can. Not too far, though. 
So, uh, and there you can then open, you can then visualize this friend. And then you, with your fingers or hands, you open an area around the heart, the middle, what I call the middle. And when you have managed to open there, you invite Christ in three times. And if you do that correct, it has an uh, uh, um, amazing effect on the one you do that with. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try that. Hmm. Okay. Um, Renee? Hi. Hello, Ari. I'm, I'm kind of fading in and out with my, I don't know how to fix that. So sorry, you can't see my face. I think it's distracting. Um, Ari, I'm, I'm not doing so good. I would like to work with you personally, but I'm learning. And I have a big question. I've worked with flower essences for 25 years with people who are making essences with, uh, in nature, the elementals, not the Bach remedies who now make them with machines and ultraviolet lights. So I'm working with FES who make them their anthroposophists. They're well-known all over the world. I've always seen that I wanted transformation and work with the causal body. I didn't even know anthroposophy. I've come to know it through the years. And my question is, I'm having a heck of a time with supplements and homeopathy and everything with transformations, I'm just giving it all up because it's, it's literally, I'm starting to see it going through my granddaughter and my, I've already seen it. My daughter I didn't know what I was seeing because I know there is environmental sharing and resonance, but my question is, I'd like to have you help me in that way, but Flower essences are created on, you mentioned about the homeopathy being the law of, you know, likes, it's the working on that law of similars. Or flower essences is made with uh, the law of union of opposites. So I'm understanding that I have the possibility of transformation with flower essences without any aggravations like I'm getting with homeopathy. And I think the aggravations are my own spirit that I'm chasing the negative elementals. But so therefore, if we, we give flower essence to everybody with that law, it won't work. I mean, it'll stimulate some consciousness, which is how they work, but it won't take you through a transformation. As I tell my people, I'm retired now, you have to do the work. So I guess you're the next step on showing me how to do the work. I don't feel like flower essences is the question does uh, translocate, but it has the ability because it's a transformative medicine. What is your conversation on, you know, me personally with some of this crazy stuff that you could help me with, but in general, putting out the flower essences, just to letting us know if it's has the ability to transform, because I'd like to bring more of this medicine to people in just conversation, but I'd like to bring more of your work just in the simple way of trying to develop the meditation. But Again, only if the essences are made in that sensitive way, instead of the Bach remedies, which may, some of you may know, they're not made that way anymore. Bach was a homeopathist, a famous homeopathist, moved away from it to develop the sensitive medicine for transformation because he was recognizing there was something missing um, with homeopathy. I don't think he knew about translocation, but that there was something missing and that he wanted to work with the soul. Okay, so sorry, thank you for listening to my big dissertation, but I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. So but, thank but you. I have, I have still not got your question. What is the question? Question is, first of all, I'd like to work with you and I want to know how to do that personally, like if person to person to help me with some of this crazy translations, but can it be on record that flower essences do have the propensity to transform it's not a, it's a conscious medicine. It's a sensitive medicine because it's working with the elementals. They make them with the four elementals in nature and they have a certain way, Patricia and Richard Kaminsky, where they are, Richard Katz, Patricia Kaminsky, where they're making it with this sensitive nature of understanding, invoking the different realms in a balance. So your question is actually, if I think that the, uh, 
these essences transform or translocate? Yes. I, I don't know. I have to observe. But they probably can do both. But I mean, homeopathy is not going to do that because if the person... Again, again, I have to observe. I cannot say these things out of theory. I have to observe because there is a difference between therapists and uh, some translocate, some transform, most translocate, even if they use herbs or, or uh, oils, or uh, especially in homeopathy, especially in acupuncture. But you have to, there is no 100%, so I cannot answer. So it's, it's showing me it's a sensitive attunement of the human being. That's really what we're seeing here. And no matter what modality using it, it is the sensitivity of the human being and what and if they do these meditations and connect to the Christ, I, I think. Yeah, I, I, th I think the only transform, it seems, uh, uh, when I say it that way, uh, it seems a little uh, sort of uh, only, when I say only the Christ four seem to be transformative. I don't like to say the, the only, but it still seems to me <laughs> that it is the only force that transforms. It sounds a little categoric, and I don't like to be categoric, but uh, in just this case, I think I have to be categoric. <laughs> so it depends how these therapists work with the, with the Christ force. This uh, masseur I told you about, after one day of, of, um, of instruction, he could actually bring the Christ into the middle. And it was fascinating to see how that worked in the patient. And it changed the whole atmosphere in the course. Everybody, because he was a very respected uh, masseur in that uh, union, and uh, they suddenly they, they they all all the criticism disappeared. So yeah. when you're using any type of medicine, if it's an herb or anything, we should go through these process. If a person's having a problem with translocation, and they're using herbs or they're whatever they're using, we should be doing this process with every every way that we when we use a medicine, we should be using this process. Yeah. Thank you. Very much to everybody in Ari. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, Jordan is next. Jordan. Hello. Nice to see Hello. you again. Um, I just wanted to share my experiences um, the past couple of times uh, beyond the threshold. I've been using a flame to fade since our Vancouver workshops. Um, each time I meet what I believe to be the guardian's um, of the threshold, but they are frozen. Um, and I, with my will ask the question, may I speak to the gardens of the threshold? And I hear, um, them say to me that I need to go speak to Anna first. Mm. And so I asked, um, Ari where to find Anna. I wasn't sure how to reach her. And he said that, um, she was in the seventh layer of the good earth. And so with my will, the next time um, I faded into my candle, um, I was brought to her. I did not see her, but I heard her speaking to me. And she uh, told me the importance of working with gold at this time in our evolution. Um, and I know in the first workshop, you did speak to this. So I don't want to repeat that because you can find that in, in that workshop um, with the Black Magicians. But... I'm curious over the past few months, if you've received any more information through um, through your your travels about the importance of gold and maybe if there's any ways that um, we can work with them, you know, more intentionally to help at this time. Mm. This is a very interesting question because when you read this, um new published five volume work from Judith von Halle. She has almost a hundred pages where she describe 
the working of the left hand uh, mag magicians, the, the black magicians in our time. And according to her, they are <clears throat> their main attack is uh, the streams of iron inside the earth, especially in the sixth layer. And by this, they want to move or or push further to, to move the North Pole and then bring this uh, geomagnetic streams uh, that Steiner talked about in geographic medicine, how important, how they, um, how they go from north-south or east-west. If they go north-south, they strongly strengthen the aromatic uh, forces and uh, if then this this north pole is now on its way very fast from canada to russia and it might seem that that this will bring a strong aromatic tendency to the Ural, Ural uh, mountains, and then counteract the uh, the building up of the sixth epoch, which is been doing in that area just now, actually. So uh, this tendency, this uh, this try from the dark side, can be counteracted by going through the good earth into the 10th, 11th, 12th layer. And there uh, influence the streams of gold because the iron is in the, the sixth layer and the gold is in the deeper. The gold is uh, more heavy met, um, metal. So it is deeper situated in the earth. That's actually quite uh, physical. And by this streaming, counteract the streaming of the iron so that is how we can do that but to go there you have to then pass this seventh where anna is anna herself the third and then go further in to the 10th 11th 12th and there uh, sort of um, uh, give uh, give your uh, your ability to work sort of present yourself and say what shall i do what can i help you with in this this streaming of the gold so that has to be sort of streamed and the opposite way as the iron streams the iron streams go from west to east now so we have to sort of push mm -hmm. the Streams from east to west. That is my answer to that very complicated question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Bonnie? Bonnie, you next? Yes, hi. Um, hello, Ari. Um, I was at your workshop in, at Emerson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. Very well. Um, um, at one point you said that um, the elementals are evil or that some of them are evil. Is, is that correct? Well. Um, or are harmonic. I'm not sure. I got yes, the right yes. They, the, the word evil is is not actually, uh, I don't like to use that. They are yeah. all adversarial origin. Adversarial. Yeah. Uh, part of them are Arimanic dominated, a part of them are Luciferic dominated, and a part of them are Assyric dominated. Uh, it's better to say that than to say that they are evil. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, where do we start? You know, how do we know which ones are and which ones aren't? And, oh. you know, do we start with a flame? Do we start with a computer? You can start I mean, with, yeah. Yes. 
what is the question is how do we recognize uh, who is yes. aromatic who is luciferic yes oh well no not exactly um, no i mean are they all one of the three yeah all of them are one of those three or uh, so or it, it might be a certain mixture uh -huh. so basically we could start anywhere yes okay um the next question but basic, basically there are all these three types yeah okay good thank you um i have another question um so just now you spoke about um the uh, hygienic uh, elemental world and um, separating, you know, hygienic going to the occultism. center. Hygienic yes. occultism in the elemental world, yes. Okay. Um, so if we arrive to the next, uh, to the second, and pushing through the second, trying to get through to the third, how do we, um, how do we go between the, between those two, between the second and the third? Do we push up and down, sideways, back and forth? You ask how to travel into the deepest realm of the elemental world? If I feel that I am in the second and pushing through to the third, how do I go to the center and separate? As you said, the Lucifer and Aramonic you go to the middle and you push Lucifer up and Araman down. Yeah. So okay. is it the same directions mm -hmm. going from second to to for to third to sorry to first? You have a little confusion just there. I see. Okay. You see, I have uh, I have not probably not explained good enough. <laughs> um, when you merge into a uh, being an uh, animal or a human being or even a, a tree or other things you observe all three elemental beings you observe the luciferic you observe the arimanic you observe the assyric when you want to bring christ into the middle then you have to make a space for christ and then you push the Luciferic upwards and the Arimanic and Asuric downwards, or the Asuric a little to the side and the Arimanic downwards. And then you invite Christ into the middle. That is one, and that starts a transformation uh, of the elemental beings. So if but there is also another uh, possibility another method you can if you stand in front of one single elemental being because this first i described is as it is in the body of living beings okay. but you can also stand in front of one elemental beings being for example a demonic being who is not bound to a body who is a free-ranging free range the spirit you might say then you have to go into the middle of this and make an opening and there you can invite christ in that is another method and this you can do wherever you are uh, and that hasn't but if you do this in if you do this in the third realm which is the first you come to then the effect of this action will mm -hmm. can be characterized as hygienic occultism if you go into the second realm which is the middle realm dominated by the arimanic beings and you perform this deed there then the effect can be characterized as mechanical occultism if you go further and come to the first realm, which is is the third you come to, but it's called the first, that has its special reasons. 
um, where the Assyric beings dominate and you perform this uh, there, that is called eugenic occultism. And then you decide what to do with these occultisms. But that is up to you when you are there. Was that clearer? Yes, um, it is clear. Um... I, you know, in the Faders group, the Emerson uh, WhatsApp group, there was a question. Um, um, I asked a question, and um, you said, I, I asked how, you know, at what point do we do we do this Christianizing? Mm -hmm. And you said it's best to get the instructions of Vidar. Um, and I and my understanding is we would have to go all the way through all three yeah, of them you who to, get, no, you to arrive at Vidar. No, yeah, well, that is also a um, possibility. You see, on the path, on the way to the threshold, you can perform these occultisms. You okay. don't have to go in and then back. Mm -hmm. But when you have been there, then you receive instructions and that helps you further on the way to uh, if you walk to to london on the way to london you can drink from this or eat there and do different certain things but when you have come there and then you get instructions where is the best place to eat or drink then you can go back and do it sort of better so basically you have to cross the threshold to encounter Vidar? Yes. Or can you, you can't encounter him like in the second? It doesn't seem like that, no. We in a way have to go this through the elemental world by yeah. ourselves, and then we reach the spiritual world. Johanna yeah. von Kaiserling asked Rüttelsteiner about that uh, quite late, I think around the time of the agricultural course. 24 or something uh, that can because she could go partly into the elemental world but she couldn't go through it she had quite uh, certain abilities to do this and she said uh, Steiner uh, had a doctor um, can we uh, go reach the spiritual world through the elemental world and then he answered yes it is possible but Today, it is too dangerous. So, you see, then when you go through the elemental world, then you can bring all these faculties with you as long as you are aware of the transforming force of the oh Christ. If you are not aware of it, let's say you go through the elemental world without knowing these things. You just go like I did when I was five or ten years old, I had no idea about the uh, the, the uh, meaning of Christ or the, the uh, necessity of Christ. I, I didn't know. I just went in there and observed. But I was not able to do anything. I was not able to, to transform anything. I could do something. I could move the elemental beings. I could uh, travel in time and uh, other things, but I could not transform it because I didn't know. And that uh, knowledge <clears throat> I got actually from, from anthroposophy and later then, of course, from, from Vidar, who, who instructed me more detailed how to do it. Okay. Um, one last thing. Um... When I was fading um, into uh, candle, candle mm. flame, mm. Um, I felt as if I had gone into the second. Um, I, you know, saw a spider, black spider, and then uh, I, I did the separating and um, invited Christ in, and I saw what what looked like a a spiritual being, like a a being of light 
and I don't know if that was the the elemental transforming or I would I think wasn't so. Sure. I would think so. Okay. But I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, but I yeah. that is a good option. It could be. Could, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hmm. Thank you very much. So Nancy is next. Hello, Ari. Um, Hi. Ari, can you speak? Because right now, um, Andre's my only picture. But if you speak, I think you'll pop up. I can say so. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to be here. And thanks. Uh, I was at your workshop in Toronto um, and have been um, exploring different realms since then. I, I, what I'd like to just briefly speak of is immediately after the workshop, um, after being in such an intense um, space and feeling just so, so much energy and so, um, so electrified almost, I think, through our work and through, especially the group, when we, as a group, were working at Christianizing um, an object there was such a power that uh, circulated amongst us. So just the amplification of, of that was was really um, strong. And I, I carried that with me uh, through the next day. And that night I had incredible dreams. And the morning I woke up and uh, several things happened. Um, first of all, a dog jumped into my face and kind of bumped into my cheekbone in a very hard way. And then several hours later, my shoelaces got tied together and I tripped and fell very hard flat on my face and almost cracked my cheekbone where the dog had just hit. And so it just felt like a really intense way to ground after being so intensely involved. Um, but it, it did have a cautionary sense to it. So that's kind of what I'm asking is, is this, I do feel there's a connection, um, the number of things that happened afterwards and, and then the fall, but the healing that came to me afterwards was also remarkable in that even though I had, was really banged up, um, I had to deeply surrender to spiritual forces that seemed to be very available mm. at that time. Um, but, you know, a few days later, I was trying to do some of the exercises again, and then I, I got up and I stumbled. So I'm, I'm kind of just observing and a bit cautious then about, um, is this just part of the path that, our, that we go through, that we can have emotional dysregulation or physically, and not to get too thwarted by that, but to keep going? Or do I listen a bit and, and try to go a little slower? Um, I, I, you know, a few days after that, I dreamt that my third eye, there was a bubble coming out and the words were, your brain needs to be rearranged. Hmm. Um, so I'm holding that I'm doing, still doing the practices, but a lot more lightly, but it seems like I can go, hmm. I can more lightly do it in a sense as well. Um, that without as much effort, I sense that I am present with with something more, and having the the that new learning of the Christianizing. Even if I don't feel I should go further, I I pause there and I do the opening, and um, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, but afterwards, it's like I'm filled with light. Mm. So and it's almost, is, yeah, it's almost I, like I, something's coming back to me from that. I have a few comments, <clears throat> um, and I got one more just now. <laughs> and when you Christianize elemental beings, they change. They they change radically. They become light filled. Mm -hmm. They, especially in the heart, an elemental being has no heart. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the mermaid in H.C. Uh, Anderson, 
the and the elemental beings are very sad that they don't have a heart. Uh, and this mermaid, she wanted a heart, and if she could get the love of a human being, it would give her a heart. You know all this this fairy tales. So when you Christianize the uh, Christianize an elemental being, it change appearance very much. It becomes heart filled. It gets a heart. You give them a heart, and this heart radiates um, light. Uh, and that is also why a Christianized uh, medical plant or homeopathic remedy doesn't then work anymore because like cures like does not apply anymore because the elemental being has changed form. So it cannot frighten away the disease. But if you change the or Christianize the elemental being of the disease, not of the remedy, but of the disease itself in the body, then you can have a, a healing effect. That was one uh, comment. The other was, oh, <laughs> what was the other comment? Um, the first thing you said. What What was the first? I was talking about having um, crashed after. Yes, that was, yes. And uh, several have asked me to go into the elemental world and meet the elemental beings. Is it dangerous? Um, and in a way, well, uh, I usually answer in this way when you are on your way down to the earth you are going to be born let's say you are on the way down to the planetary spheres and somebody asks you there so are you ready to be born and then you ask yeah but is it dangerous and then you think about all these dangers that you will meet as being born. You go to school, you be being mobbed, you are beaten up by bullies, you cross roads, there are cars, wars. Of course, there are dangers. And that is also in the elemental world, of course. But if you... Nothing is without any day. You can be frightened. You can be uh, stopped by uh, elemental beings that are of specially adversarial strength. Uh, so yes, they can make certain problems for you. But if you were to avoid every danger or problem, then you never would actually be even born. You have to sort of, you can't go out of your door. That's dangerous. There are cars. <laughs> there are. There are. I, I, I get that. I guess it's it's a sign of either maybe I'm doing it right or I'm doing it maybe not <laughs> right enough, you know, that I suppose I can't avoid it all. But, um, but I guess, but I, I suppose it is instructive in that, you have to learn on the way you had like in life itself. First time I went to a big city, you know, I was scared, but I had to be careful. Okay. Green light, red light. Oh, that I've never seen that before. Red means that you don't go and green means go. So you, 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 the, the elemental world and also the other spiritual worlds, they have their rules. They have their inhabitants. They have their uh, laws to abide by. And you don't know that until you come there. Mm -hmm. First time I came to India, I asked the taxi driver, is it right driving or left driving here? Because I couldn't figure out by watching the traffic. And the first taxi driver said, oh, there is right driving. And then I asked another and he said, oh, no, there's left driving. So. <laughs> but you have to to experience these 
laws and rules yeah. everywhere you come, and they differ. They yeah. are different. Uh, it is, for example, the the laws of a tra transformed elemental being is very different from a law of a not transformed elemental being. It's like in nature. If you go in the forest and you see a, a cow, a huge cow, they are quite big, horns, but you're not really afraid because it is tame. But if you see, uh, go into the forest and you see a wild swine, you should be very careful. <laughs> they, are, they are little. So you, you have to do that, yes. Okay. Thank you. Just one more question is around the group work. Um, you know, it was very powerful when we were doing something together. And now I understand, you know, many groups are coming together to pray for the world, say, uh, you know, especially particular situations. Um, so there's many groups saying, okay, we'll meet, you know, at seven o'clock or 12 o'clock. My question is, if we're praying with a loving intent with people from afar, and there does seem to be impact from it, but is that possibly still translocation? Um, if, if everybody is not doing it through the Christ force. Could be. It is always that possibility in the spiritual world, especially, yeah, in the spiritual world, especially the elemental world. You can transform or you can translocate. If you translocate, then you are pushing it on to others, which is not actually moral. Right. So even if a group is using it in a prayerful way and doing it with that loving intent, but not necessarily going into the third realm with a consciousness or in carrying the word Christ, it's... it's Could be. Could be. I, 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 I cannot say it is or not, uh, but the, you, you have to be aware of the possibility. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so Nick is next. Nick. Unmute your machine, please. Uh -huh. Sorry, I mean... <laughs> Good day there, Ara. Thank you uh, so much for coming to Canada. It was really, uh, it's really a wonderful experience. I really uh, appreciate all the information that you pass along to us, and uh, I really appreciate uh, the group as well. I really thank uh, Nancy as well. I have had a very similar experience uh, at that Toronto thing after we practiced our Christianization and the the spiral of energy that occurred after. Uh, I have felt it very much ever since and thought about it really uh, very strongly. Uh, I'd like to thank you for that, but I'd also like to thank all of these, all of our dear friends here for all of your wonderful questions. And uh, all of these videos have been so essential in providing me some really great answers to the questions that I was having during this process over the past uh, month and a half. All of you guys asked such great and thoughtful things and your responses are were just what I needed when I needed it. So. Uh, Thank you all, especially the the physical changes. Uh, when you mentioned that in your episode five, because uh, I had been noticing the same with my hair after that, after the 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 conference, all of a sudden I couldn't stand my hair in a ponytail. Like every time I I put in a ponytail, uh, I, I get a bad headache. I just immediately take it out. And same thing too is is very straight now. Like my hair is supposed to be curly and like a lot of knots and. Uh, that's is, is, is a little scary to begin with, uh, as well as uh, I stopped um, right after I, I lost my taste for meat. Uh, I lost, uh, I really, I'm a chef by trade and like I love cooking roast. That was a big thing. And then uh, that same day, like we I went home, I just tasted like this doesn't taste right. And uh, I just now still no, I don't feel sick. Although I did eat a McDonald's, my wife got me a McDonald's burger early and then I <laughs> ate it and I threw up that night. Two hours later, I threw up and as a, I it was, it was not right. It tasted good. Let me tell you, it tasted really good. Uh, but I threw up that night. Uh, and since then, like, I just made me really think about it. Now there's tasting. Uh, and the other one I had, I had a glass sliver in my hand for three years. It's been in my, my finger. I tried to get it out so many times. 
three days after after this thing, it had like a little bit of pus around and it sloughed out. It, it came right out. Uh, and when you told me that these things could happen, I just understood. It made me feel a lot better. Um, and the other major one was when you said that like, uh, when I first started and we I passed into like the Luciferic realms, I started seeing the things. I was so happy and excited. Uh, and I was like, you know, I was like, oh man, I feel, I feel like I am Christianized. You know, I have that, uh, that, that I really could feel Christ's love, which I still feel, but I also saw the beauty and all the other things. And then, uh, as I continued to go, I started, uh, into the harmonic realms and I saw the, the different, uh, energies going and, uh, I started getting sad and I couldn't understand why I was, I was feeling down all of a sudden because I was down. And then you explain that you feel it as you're passing through. Uh, and then once I understood that, uh, I understood this, the Azuric problems that, um, problems, my, my own Azuric, uh, demons that are inside me became, it much, became much more clear that I could now see them coming back and forth through, uh, through the things that I was fading into. Cause when I looked down, I could see something cause you had mentioned that uh, the Azuric, um, force was on the bottom right side. And you said this in a video and I was like that same day, I think it was last Thursday. I was very deep and focusing in my morning uh, training and I just remembered and I went down and I could watch, I was watching the stream and I Christianized right, right below and I could see the stream cut out. Like what was like the thing that I've seen, it, it was gone. It, 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 no, it was slightly there, but it wasn't, it wasn't bright. And then since then, like my fears, my uncertainties, my doubts, they're gone. They're, they're, they're gone. They are always weird to me to begin with because they never felt natural. I'm a positive, upbeat person. I like to love, very open. So it always felt very weird to me. And uh, now I feel not, it's not nothing, but it feels a bit like the Azure realm. Like it feels more like, feels more, uh, when I'm there, it feels more like, uh, it feels a little more like nothing opposed to, uh, the strong so do, you, do you have any specific questions for this time? Yes. Uh, so now that, that I am deep, I believe I have seen. Uh, I believe that I've seen the the face of, of Vidar. It was a uh, one of my deep ones. I was staring at a white wall. I saw the sun and I saw a face that looked very much like He Man from the cartoon. It, the haircut was exactly the same, and he was smiling. Uh, and I immediately though fell into a dream. Like I, I, I had to close my eyes to see that because uh, my eyes became so heavy and I had to close them. And I, when I saw it, I saw him there smiling, didn't say anything, but it was positive. But then I fell asleep for 30 minutes and uh, it wasn't a dream or that I could remember at all. So I'm asking them, um, is it possible to be receiving uh, knowledge through your dreams while you sleep and uh, as well as getting uh, the information that I'm looking for? Yeah, uh, when you are in uh, a teaching situation with Vidar, this teaching go on 24-7, even if you sleep. And these answers and teaching come usually as a, also a change in body, hmm? a change in the hair, a change in the brain structure. And that is uh, so... Um, interesting because that is one of the comments from the one before you or two before you that she said i she needed a change in the brain structure yes yes i had, and, a, I had a dog um snap at me as well and i'm a very dog person and a, a dog that normally came i had to because i think thinking had to change excuse me for yeah. And that is what uh, Steiner meant, I think, when he said that Vidar is going to bring or will be going to bring the new, uh, the new clairvoyance. And this clairvoyance is actually what you get at the threshold from Vidar. There he will, with the help of Balder, he will actually change, change the structure of your brain so that you have another clairvoyance than before. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very much there, Ara. Thank you. I remember you from Toronto. <laughs>
it was a, it was a great time. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. So uh, La is next. Am I right, La or Lay? Yes, please unmute your machine. Hi, um, hi Ari. Um, so I saw one of your things online, YouTube. Um, and I also saw you talk with Jason on his on the podcast. I am um, I, no, I don't I, don't, I, I don't saw you can you can I you repeat? I saw you talk with Jason on the port on well, I listened to you talk with Jason Horsley okay. on a, a podcast fairly recently and thought I wanted to um, to meet you because I related to what you said. Uh, this, uh, not because of anthroposophy, I'm not quite sure a lot about that, but as a kid, I was going in the elementals and uh, I've been doing that for many years. Um, and that was all good for a while. Things were going good and there was transformation and uh, lots of change in light. Uh, but COVID came and since COVID came, uh, it's been harder to go into that uh, elementals because it's I've been faced with more um, difficult things like the people I've been talking about my life was having more unfortunate events or things happening. And I felt like I was picking up entities um, and then I have to work to get them out. And so it, recently I feel like I picked up something, an entity or whatever, and I got hurt and I've been working with Christ consciousness, right? I go to, and I started going to church in the past year and, and getting closer. As a little kid, I was very close to Jesus. Um, and lots of stuff happened, lots of traumas. And when traumas happen, there's like fragments of self. Um, so, and I was working with people. I would see, I would see, like you said, the the things that were going wrong and I could change them. I could take them out. I could just pull them out. Um, but that's been harder for me to do. I still see them and I go into elementals and I see beings and, and I just tell them lately just to leave me alone, just to back off because I, 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 there's some confusion. Like I didn't know all these things. You have this map or format or method. And it's like, I never had a method. I was just going in there. And sometimes I would hear things and tell me what to do. Or I would just trust the energy, trust the, trust the higher power. And so now the finding Christ in the middle for myself, I've been, because I've had a lot of pain. I had a, a spinal injury that came because I think because of doing this work and I've been asking Christ and doing a lot of praying to like come in and offer healing and and it's just been a, a bit of a roller coaster and I'm so I'm wondering why why it's been so challenging lately uh I felt like I was doing pretty decent work I was doing a lot of work. I was changing a lot of things because I could do that. I mean, it's hard to tell people about these things because they don't they don't see them. But it sounds like some people see these things. So what, I, I don't, what is your question? I don't get your question. My question is: so how do I like you have the Christ energy expand in myself and go? Because I used to be to go through elementals to get to spiritual. And I used to get to the spiritual that way, but now I can't go through that. It's it's really it's and that many... and that is after you had COVID. Is that what you say? It's after COVID came. COVID came and changed a lot of things in the energy. Then, and then, so my answer to that is: seek. Uh, you see, COVID uh, had to do with the Asuric elementals, so that can hinder you. So you have to go to the area of the Asuric, and that was described by this man before you. He said, I went down to the Asuric area, and 
open the middle of the Asuric being that belongs to the COVID and then Christianize this Asuric being. That is what I would say. How do you go to the... I don't understand this level. I just go in. I don't know where the levels are. I just... Yeah, I... that doesn't matter. You have to somehow seek up the Asuric being that is related to COVID and you Christianize it. Simply and shortly, like that. And that'll help myself if I Christianize this. Yes. And you also will help others. If you Christianize the elemental being of COVID, you will also help others who have had problems with COVID and also problems with the uh, vaccine so because yeah, the I mean, beings are quite equal yeah, I think, yes other beings will come in and trick they like trick like or say they can be tricky they, they're not all like you might think that's the right one how do you know that's the right one that you have to know from the effect okay. the proof of the pudding is in the eating as always You don't know if it's the right one until you have changed it and then see the effect. And so it's changing and going in each and every time. There's there's a there's some there's been some risk to myself when I do that. I've noticed that as well. Don't be so uh, occupied with risk. Just do it and see because you cannot do anything wrong by Christianizing an elemental being. Okay. maybe you don't find the right one that is a possibility or maybe you find that you have to try and do it and see the effect that is like life generally you have to go out into the world you have to try to change what you can change and then see if you have changed the right things or not sometimes it looks like when I change things, it looks like I could be changing things in my own body that are I shouldn't change. I'm I not, don't. Yeah. It's not well, I, I think if you Christianize it, then I think there cannot be much wrong. That is in okay. my opinion. So just Christianize it. Don't don't change the structure of it. No, Christianize it. Without changing the structure, the energetic forms. When you Christianize it. Christ change it for you. So you just ask Christ to do it and don't do anything yourself. Yeah. You leave it to Christ how to do it. So if I leave it to Christ, Christ will tell me what to do. With you know, you invite Christ into the middle of the elemental being and then he can do that. You don't do it. Not you, but Christ in you. Not me, but Christ in me, as Paul said. So if I hear, like if I invite that's... Christ into it and I hear and I say, you need to do this with it, that's Christ telling me what to do, right? No, Not... I said just invite in. Okay, I have answered now. Just ask, invite Christ in and leave it to him. Okay. Period. Okay. Um, so dear friends, thank you. So here is a line of questions. So Christine is next. Christine. Thank you, um, Andre. Um, your voice is a little bit uh, low. Maybe you can change it by your computer. I can not, um, unfortunately. I don't know. <laughs> so, Ara, hello. Hi. You see us in uh, Germany. Yes, we did. Tutsing. Yes. <laughs> And you had really a horrible trip to us and going oh, yeah. away the same. Horrible. Terrible. It took time and money. <laughs> Thank you that you have been with us. So um, I I gave you um, um, a description for my massage. Do you remember that forming and in the middle opening and inviting the Christ. Yes. 
And now I have the question because I'm not in the moment um, ready or I, I, I doesn't see an elemental being. Is it also okay that I do that? Yes. Thank you. And that I experienced with this, uh, this course I had for the Norwegian masseurs. The one who uh, had this very, very good effect, he didn't. He felt the middle. Yeah. That is what he did. He felt the middle and he was very sure every time he was right every time. He didn't see the elemental beings, but he found the middle and that is enough. Okay. Because I, I know my hands find it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Course. The effect is even more if you can see them the sort of the, the more you you can observe or see or or get into the elemental world the more you can do there it is just like in our world if you can feel let's say you are going through a forest and you are not really seeing but you can smell oh yeah here here are trees here is forest and you can go through the forest you can do that without seeing very much yeah. but you see you can do even more and you can see oh there's an oak there's a spruce there is oh there's a, a moose there's a bear i have to be careful <laughs> so uh so the more you sort of uh, observe or or feel or yeah the better but you can do a lot by just finding the middle in in massage and what i'm realizing over all the years that um, just when I hear La now, um, it is a special if you are in your inner connection to the Christ mm. and following his, his words, if two or three are together in my name. Mm. And that is happening if that client I give massage or with my um, mm. students in that um, yeah, uh, special two. needs school. Then you are two or three. Yeah. Maybe that is that that um, greater circle we need to 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 call or to accept. And um, maybe we could help each other more when we have that in, in our mind. Hmm. Yes. So as you experience that um, doing your, um, your um, behandlung uh, in, a, in a circle with, yes. with, with the group. Yes. That is Maybe another, that... yeah. That is another effect, actually, which you, which one should experience. Um, but I also thinking about this group here. We are a group now of yeah. um, fifty persons. Uh, fifty persons. Yeah, that is a group. Yes. And uh, I think that also works as a group. We are helping each other both spiritually and in understanding with questions. Yeah. Yeah, we have Telegram accounts. Um, so we should specifically set to ask questions and share these experiences. So I mm. sent link to Ari too, and uh, you're welcome to participate. So I will send you link too. So, okay, uh, Mima, so are we done with uh, Christine, right? Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Ara. Okay. I will not hold that space all for me. No. <laughs> thank you. Mima, uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Mima. Thank you. Hello, Ara. We met in Vancouver uh, a month or so ago. So I wanted to reflect on something that was said earlier today uh, about uh, how it is only Christ that can transform. 
and some thoughts came to me uh, from my readings of uh, Steiner's lectures and studies, the statement, I am the Alpha and the Omega, that Christ is the Alpha and the Omega of everything. Yeah. And uh, that uh, it's, to me, it is not surprising or puzzling. Like it seems right that Christ would be the only ultimately transformative power also, when we look from Steiner's insights into mystery of Golgotha, that it was only Christ who could bring that uh, force to rejuvenate our connection to the spiritual world and set mm. us on that path. Now, in the terms of uh, uh, why is it now uh, okay to go through the elemental world, and it wasn't okay at the time of Christ, also from Steiner's insights, and yours, like in the 20th centuries, when the Christ being's birth in the etheric happened, which wasn't at Steiner's times, and also uh, with your insights that now the elemental worlds have opened, all three of them, that now we have that possibility. <clears throat> and also another part is that uh, Christ has become the Lord of Karma. Hmm. That to me, all of that plays into this picture. Why is Christ the ultimate transformative, the only transformative force? Hmm. Now, from my personal work, uh, since that workshop in Vancouver, I felt a hesitation to start uh, directly fading. Uh, like I kept thinking, okay, this week is too busy. I'm going to start next week. <laughs> I'm a older teacher, kindergarten, lots of work at this time. But then I realized that I have actually a certain hesitation and fear because I, uh, my uh, feeling is that my personal history has had some periods of myself and my family having uh, significant adversarial forces, interference. And I feel like it's been a while now that I'm in a really much more grounded and, and kind of a good period. And I have a little hesitation and fear that I'm with a, this consciously fading and seeing and I might uh, attract unwanted interference and I might have difficulty dealing with it. Now I've heard your advice to other people who have expressed the fear that one has to take a certain risk, but I wonder whether you have any additional uh, advice as to how to overcome that uh, hesitation and fear. In, in particular for me, I think what brings it also, I live alone with my cat and I'm thinking now if I come home and I'm seeing all this, <laughs> possibly, <laughs> is it going to impact my sleep, my, you know, calm? And I know there is Christ and I, I, I'm working very strongly with inviting Christ's presence all mm. through the day. And But yeah, just if you have any advice on how to further uh, well, help yeah. myself. You know, Steiner, especially in the 19 lessons, he was very aware that there are these uh, counter forces, which he called animals, the tree animals. They are really trying to hinder you. And they also, he said, is created out of the conditions of this time, this present time, every present time. <clears throat> and the one has to do with the thinking, one with the feeling, one with the mm -hmm. willing. But they are also related to fear, to doubt, and to hate. Mm -hmm. And there is only one remedy against it, which is love, hope, and faith. Mm -hmm. So you have must have love for what you will meet love thy enemy even mm. if you meet a demon you have to love it and you have not to fear it that is courage love courage and faith and believe that it will go well 
Mm -hmm. So if you practice love, courage, and faith, faith. you shouldn't have anything to fear. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have anything to, uh, to, uh, to doubt, and you shouldn't have anything to hate. Thank you. I also wanted briefly to share uh, how I've been working and I felt benefits uh, in situations when I was, uh, for example, in a meeting with a group of people with a very contentious situation. I couldn't do, you know, the gestures hmm. or, or speak of this work, but I would internally just invite Christ to be present hmm. and to help with the most optimal resolution or in my work with individual children too then like when i couldn't you know do the the openings i would also just internally invite christ mm. or if i would enter a space where there is a group of people and i would feel that there is a kind of just doesn't feel right intuitively i don't have a vision of elementals but i can feel in on a certain level then I would just invite Christ's presence. Mm. 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 Just, just wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you next. Hello. Thank you. All right. Um. My question is, um, uh, how do I say? It's it's just a sort of a technical question. It's not something that I'm really, um, I, I'm not um, closely uh, connected to what I'm asking about, but I do want to um, ask it anyway, because I read about um, the, mechanical and the Huguenish and the um is it um eugenic eugenic this it's the three occultisms and in in that one it was talking about um I if I understood it correctly it was about more literally the machines the mechanical yes. and then connecting with um the disease one of them and the other one with actually uh birth yes yeah and so i'm only asking just i'm just touching that because we've spoken about it otherwise now but we didn't say about those we didn't talk about it that way so I just sort of don't see quite the connection or maybe it it's not necessary or well, uh, the the in this third realm, you can heal. That is a hygienic. You can heal diseases. You can influence okay. the strength of the Luciferic and Aromanic and Assyric forces in the body. In the second, you can actually then influence the working of machines, the working of material substances. Uh, the working of physical toxins, poisons. Uh, I, I just remember now uh, something on the news many, many, many years ago that was written in the Bible that if you have opened for me something, Christ say, then you can step on scorpions and snakes. And there were some somebody in uh, somewhere, Africa or Japan or somewhere, who had taken that literally. So they stepped on snakes and, of course, died. Uh, but but that is actually from. You have to go into the second realm, then you can influence these substances and then when you go into the first realm you can influence death and birth literally okay yeah. that is meant by three occultisms wonderful thank you so much yeah thank mm. you 
Thank you very much, um, June. Hi. Hello, dear friends. Hello, Are. Um, I started about six weeks ago looking into the candle, and um, I just see dark blue areas around the flame. But I went down to the sea. I lived quite near the coast and uh, looked into the sea. I, I love the water and I love to swim. And I saw something a bit like that. Mm. Which is the William Blake's painting. It was like arms coming up from the sea. And but I can't get down to the sea at the moment. It's been storms every day. And I'm going to carry on looking into the candle. You live in the south of England? I live in Cornwall. Yes, I thought so from your dialect. And uh, this, this, it seems that two of you are able to see the elementals of the water and both is are from south, south, southern england ah. so if if uh, glenn is here maybe you could say something about that hello glenn <laughs> if you can unmute yourself if you're here ah now oh we yeah, Glenn was here. Glenn, I think he was. <clears throat> yes, uh, Glenn and get I have both. Comment. Get him Glenn to comment. Glenn and I have on... both seen this. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But get him to comment on the elemental beings in the water, or maybe you can do it. Yeah, this is Bonnie. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um. Yeah, Glenn and I have talked a lot about that. Of you know, looking into the um, sparkling reflection of either the sun or the moon um, on the water and the ocean. And and it seems like we're seeing similar things. And they, they feel like the elementals, as you expressed this. Um, but I also had one, one more level added to that, which was um, I saw these rings that were like at different distances from like at the beginning where the waves crash on the shore there was a big ring it was like a, a portal and then these elemental you know rings of elemental beings these white flashing always moving uh, wow beings uh, at, at various levels and as they went back they went smaller uh, i've been trying to do a drawing of it but it's it's just you know there aren't the right materials to um <laughs> to express it but yes i think it's a it's it's a thing mm. fantastic yeah that, that's very encouraging I, i'm waiting for the storms to finish so i can go back and uh sit and quite interesting, uh, the place that Steiner commented on the elemental beings of the water was actually in uh, Cornwall in Tintangle. Tin tin Tintangle. Tintangle. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. That's so, so it interesting. seems that the elemental beings are especially strong in the water of southern England. Mm. Yeah. Well, I uh, I saw them in Italy. I saw them in uh, here yeah. in uh, Pacific Ocean. So, yeah. and and that is also a comment I have. When you first have seen them, then you can see the, see them everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Yes. <coughs> and <laughs> one other thing you you said uh, in one of your talks that um. If you douse, you're going into one of the elemental realms. And I, I douse at the big stone circles that we have. Hmm. Uh, um, could you just go into that a little bit more, please? 
Well, uh, <clears throat> that is uh, quite long. I have been, <laughs> I have 30, 40 years of working with the so-called Earth radiation. Yeah. And uh, both in Norway, in Sweden, Germany, America, and so on. And it is very obvious for me that the Earth radiation itself is elemental beings. Mm. Elemental beings. And when you then see these elemental beings that is related to the dowsing, the earth radiation, then you can ask them to just move or go away from that house or go other places. You don't mm. have anything with copper or, or symbols or whatever. So when you are into the dowsing, you are actually detecting or sort of communicating with elemental beings already. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm, you too. I'll carry on. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. So Benny is next. Hi, right, Benny. Yeah, unmute. You're still muted. Excellent. Hello. Hi. Hi again. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Ari. Um, and very quickly to Andre, I'm so sorry I hadn't posted lots of things on Telegram. Uh, I do intend to do that immediately after this workshop. Um, things interfered which are relevant to this workshop now. Um, I wanted to say that I've had a lot of poltergeist interference. Uh, they stole my financial records, which I had on paper in case we had a global internet outage, and they've totally disappeared. They've been controlling my computer to give me amazingly just incomprehensible messages. Um, so... I think everything in the elemental sphere has been swirling around me and doing different things. And you warned that last time. And so thank you. Um, I'm not, I'm not, um, I can handle it. I'm handling it. Um, Good. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but, but there have been computer interferences. So my apologies to Andre, which I promised I would post lots of things for him. Now, um, I wanted to say I've experienced it, a lot of changes of height. So I'm walking around, I'm doing my everyday things, and suddenly I'm feeling extremely tall and amazingly big. And then the next moment I'm feeling in my ordinary physical form again. Um, from my reading of Steiner, I gather that has to do with the experience of the Atlanteans where they had control of the etheric energies and could um, increase or decrease their physical form at that stage. And I'm feeling that this is some sort of connected thing that has still come down to us through the thousands of years since Atlantis. Um, so I thought that I was feeling myself in an enlarged etheric body. Now that's my brain trying to interpret <laughs> what I was experiencing in terms of what Steiner taught and it might be right and it might not. So I would appreciate your feedback um, but I have something connected with that, which gave me cause uh, for pause in a big way. Um, I was walking through my living room to another room, and I was thinking intensely about the various ways I'd like to kill my landlord because of things that were going on with me. And my cat saw me around the corner of the room and my cat freaked out 
at what he saw. And that shocked me totally because I had never seen my cat frightened um, in my presence before. We're very close. I'm an old cat lady. Um, so it took me by, I got a great shock. And I thought, well, something is happening. And I'm obviously having an effect on my environment that I had no idea about. Um, and my cat is reflecting that back to me. So since then, I've been very careful about how many people I wanted to kill in my ordinary day <laughs> consciousness because, <laughs> yeah, it seems to be having more of an effect than normal. So maybe I need to be more careful about about it. Um, can you comment, please? Yeah, well, I I think I first or second time we had this workshop, I commented on that there are these side effects when you start to deal with elemental beings or go into the elemental world. And uh, one of them is that you feel very big or very small. That is one side effect. And you have problems then in in judging distances. So that can be a little problematic if you drive car at that moment, you have to stop it. And uh, for that reason, I was excused to, uh, I, I was supposed at a certain time in my life to be the guard of um, bomb shelters in Norway in case of war. And then I said, well, I have a problem sometimes to judge distances so i'm and then it's i i was supposed to close the doors <laughs> so the last one in you know <laughs> uh, so so that is a side effect so i was excused that work and you find uh, and then you have also this poltergeist effect that things disappear the first time uh, and actually appear uh, I told about the first time I was uh, in in um, in Canada, Alaska, Canada, and Chicago, uh, where I was not allowed to come in. I was at the airport, and I didn't have the necessary vaccinations. And then I just slept the night, and the day after, I had everything I needed. The, the, the records in the computer, not my computer, but in the governmental health computer was changed overnight. And uh, I have proof of that because I have I have um, printouts before that I didn't have enough vaccination. And then the day after I had enough. And then a month later, I didn't have enough again. So you see, they can really change these things. And that is sort of uh, some side effects in the beginning uh, of, of, of this venture. So when you ask that, so, so, so there are certain things that is somewhat unpleasant, like frightening cats, you know, and things disappear and and you don't know how big you are or small you are. It's like Alice in Wonderland. Mm. I, I yeah. think sometimes that this description is when entering the elemental world. There are uh, that Alice in Wonderland. The same is uh, Narnia. You go through this, this locker, this clothes. And then you come into another world where there are alien beings and 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 there you have this snow queen, this evil queen. You have to meet her. There are evil forces that, but they are existing. So we, we cannot avoid it. Everything is not just good and pleasant. Yeah, that is my comment. Thank you so much. I am coping, but I'm curious always as right. to what it means. Read, I have read, a... read Alice in Wonderland once more. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I, I've read it. <laughs> I yeah. know. I, I yeah. totally empathise with it. Um, 
Thank you. I just needed some reassurance there. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a question. Where exactly do we exit from the body? I usually exit from my front head, but I can also do it from my heart area. I can do it from my left hand and I can do it from my right hand. So that is uh, up to you. You can choose. I had no idea. I, I think I've been doing it or trying to do it from the heart. Yeah, many do. But the knowledge of left and right hand is totally new. I guess some do from the third eye. Um, um, but the left and right if, hand? Yeah, if I venture from my left hand into an animal, I can see the the minerals in that uh, that animal so i can uh, i can make a sort of assessment of does it need more copper or magnesium or calcium or some or iron and so on and from the right hand i can see the contents of proteins in the body ah uh, right so, so you see from where you go out you you get you come into the spiritual world in different ways from where you go out. Uh, and also you come into different areas of the spiritual world if you go through the door of death, the door of the elements, the door of the sun or the door of God. As, I mean, there are very many individual variations you can uh, you can work with. It's not only one path. There are many paths, paths, as they say in America. Thank you. But mm. as a woman, we tend to be associated with the left-hand path historically, as mm. far as I've been able to ascertain, which may be simply to do with the hangover from the age of Aries, the fourth cultural epoch. Um, which was very much, um, well, patriarchal. Um, but it bothers me that all the time as a woman, there seems to be this mixing across to um, black magic and the undesirable side of things. Oh. Obviously, as, obviously, as a woman, I don't feel myself to be a black magician. <laughs> but I just have a problem that all the time, if you're a woman, it's wrong. If you're left-handed, it's wrong. If it's the left-hand path, it's wrong. And I'm trying to find something positive because I feel I've got an association with that side. And it may well have to do with the door of death, and I'm comfortable with that. But I'm still trying to... I get a little bit more understanding of how I stand in relation to that. Yeah, it's very interesting with this left hand and right hand magicians because the door of death is on the left side when you go through the elementals. Yes, and on the if you go out from the left, you can assess the mineral substance, minerals of which is actually quite aromatic. Uh, so I've been pondering a lot about these things, me too. <laughs> so we, we go forward and find what we can find as we experience. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. I've probably had enough time. I've got a lot of more questions, but maybe I should give over to other people. Yeah, we, time... we, have, we have used most of the time <laughs> soon, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, if there is more time, I, I'll come back, but I'll hand over to others now, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Penny. And sorry. Um, so, uh, Adrian disappeared. Adrian. No, no Adrian. So, if it's not Adrian, so Anthony, please. Anthony, hello. Yeah, un yeah, unmute your machine. You're still muted. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Yes. Is that good? Ah, yes. hello, hello. <laughs> good to see you again, Ari. The first yeah. bench man. <laughs> ah, well, <laughs> it was a wonderful uh, gathering in, in Vancouver, and uh, thank you for that. Um, left me with a lot to, to work with, uh, as you did with many other people that were there. Um, and um, it was a great experience because I had tried the candle entry uh, previously, and I wasn't getting very far. But uh, when you brought up the cell phone possibility, it didn't take long. And uh, the experience that I had, of course, was that the cell phone disappearing in my hands, basically, that the material, the matter of the cell phone almost dissolved away. And then I was able to enter the various stages that you've spoken about. Mm. And and then reach uh, a place at the other end where actually the, the sun came out, and glorious sunshine uh, filled the sky and the sun in the center of it. And then I thought about uh, about it afterwards, and I thought, okay, would that be considered to be the sun path that you spoke about and not the more direct path up the middle? Certainly not the death path. But with that, could one consider that to have been the sun path? That I cannot answer you, but I know more and more that these paths, as Steiner said, to really get into the spiritual, you should walk all three paths or four paths here, I say one time. And I have seen that you can change between these paths from the elemental, which is sort of the middle. You can jump over to the left, to the right. You can, this, this varies. And also on this elemental path, there are, of course, the whole cosmos is there. So, um, so I think, uh, I think uh, those who are afraid of the elemental path, I think they can vary from the elemental to the others. But I am not, uh, I cannot answer you for sure what you experience there that, that I, I cannot. Well, thank you. Um, I've been but it, but it seems more and more that this uh, merging into flame is maybe not the best way. A flame seems very spiritual, you know, and, and so on, but even a, a cell phone is maybe easier or better, which is a little I don't actually like it is, but so it is. <laughs> Well, I think it was the matter of holding something material in my hand. Yeah. And allowing that to fade away and to go beyond the material mm. world. And I think that that, and that became a little easier um, later because it, would, uh, it wouldn't take as much time to mm. dissolve away. And it was always that feeling, okay, now I'm entering. Now I'm entering. And um, the last meditation that I did uh, was very, um, very different. Uh, had to, a lot to do with the inside of cathedrals and churches, <laughs> part of the journey. Hmm. And at the end, uh, even I saw one of the the animals. Uh, I believe there were three, perhaps, in the back. Two, the other two in the background, but one came forward with two large teeth, looking at me, and it was quite wild. But it didn't bother me at all. You know, I didn't. I wasn't troubled by it. So I just kept going. And then yeah. when I kept going, I, I came into a, uh, almost like a sarcophagus, a dark area. And um, and then I had to really wait to come out of that. And again, I came out into a cathedral-like structure. And um, and then as I, w I thought I was reaching a point where I would break through, but I couldn't. It stopped me. Something stopped me there. I could not go through. And I waited and I waited and I... But it didn't happen. So I'm going to go back to that and try again and see what, what will open up for me. Hmm. You know what I think? What hmm. you describe is something I have experienced. That is when 
this going through the sarcophagus and coming into some kind of building or church or pyramid that is going back in former lives. Mm. Mm. And uh, often you come to where you need to come, that where you have committed uh, actions that is often not really uh, good, that is become karmic. And then you have actually to face that. And that is uh, can be hard for many, and but uh, and then you sort of uh, go back because you you don't like to see your uh, deeds of future or, or, or past times. Mm -hmm. But this is how you get into a past life. Mm. Thank exactly you. what you described there. Thank you. When, uh, and I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to show you something. I, as a filmmaker, I traveled a lot in northern Canada. And one of the areas that I filmed in was the, the north part of uh, Baffin Island, which takes us up to the place of the where the magnetic pole was and is now yes, shifting. That was very good, very correct. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's a place there called Mary River um by pond inlet and pond inlet is the the very top part of baffin island so you're you're up in the arctic at that point and mary river my job was to go and make a film on three mountains of iron now this is iron which is protruded volcanically because there was an old volcano the, the helicopter pilot wanted me to experience uh garnet inside a volcano the walls of a volcano so he took me there and but there are three mountains, and these are not peak mountains. They're large hills, essentially, which are now being mined. Um, I'll show you a piece. I don't know if you can see this, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Is this obvious? Oh, yeah, here. Okay, so this is from there. This is from the deposit, which, of course, at one time was molten. And uh, here, I have a magnet. Oh. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so you can see the, the magnet. Yes. Very magnetic, and there are two types of iron there. One is magnetite, which what well, this is magnetite. Very magnetic. And then there's another, which is hematite, which is not magnetic. Found in the same area of these three, three mountains. And the content of the iron there is 67% in the ore, 67%. Samples were taken to Germany and put into a smelter, and it came out as, as pure iron, essentially, without any processing, without any separation of anything. There's another, there's a, an island off the coast of um, Greenland, about the same latitude, which an anthroposophist actually was working with the iron there, and it's, it's of the same type. So I'm wondering about the, you know, the under under the sea, under the ocean current of this iron movement mm. it has to do with the magnetic North Pole. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is being shifted, but by the Dark Brotherhood, you say, is working, the, the black magicians are working with that. So it, it's, it's just, it's very fast, it's fascinating. I mean, how this, this uh, being uh, connected to Mars, so um, has this this incredible ability. Hmm. Anyway, I thought I would bring that up. Is that... Thank you, thank so... you. This, these yeah. these aspects are today probably much more important than we realize. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, well, Ari. Very short question. What was this business with cell phone? Did Anthony uh, fade it right in the device or what? Yes, uh, let him explain. Let him explain. You okay. see, cell phone is one of my favorites to open the middle and change because it you can feel it. So you can then, uh, the brain doesn't cook. Those who are allergic to cell phone, those who react on this radiation, they can feel an immediate change. So when you crystallize the elemental being in a cell phone, it doesn't hurt you anymore. Hmm. Anthony, and, uh, can, can you describe? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Andre. I think your levels are yeah, low. Sorry. Could you describe your experience with cell phone? Was cell phone on or off? How did you fade it in? I think I may have had it on, but you know, without uh, you know, blocked. That is airport. Uh, you know, air, air, airport mode. So it was on. The screen screen was on, right? Yes, but yeah, I don't think that that mattered. I don't think that being on may have okay. mattered, but I for, what I thought about was just the physical aspect of it, the material aspect of it. <clears throat> gotcha. Because what became important for me is to, you know, to go through it. I tried it with this piece of metal and it wasn't working as well. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I did Christianize the piece of metal before I, before I used it. But I just could not, it, it didn't have the same kind of ability to allow me to go through it. So there's something more to this than the cell phone. Yeah. Much more. Yeah. Mm. Dear friends, we are working already two hours and three minutes. So, and I apologize uh, to Nick and Leos, uh, because Adrian, Adrian, are you able to ask a question? Um, yeah, yes. Do you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you, Andre. Hello, Are. I found out your course like a month ago and watched all the videos before, and I tried to merge into candle or or a flower, and. Well, the vision got a bit blurry and black from like from the outside of the vision. That's what that is my experience so far these last two weeks. And I'm I'm from Slovakia, but I'm currently now in Switzerland working in a company, something like Amazon. And it comes it, it's my question is um, I try to merge into the machines that look like Amazon. And while doing it, I just started to feel like a lot of hatred towards humanity in general. Is that a combination? Uh, is that a effect of the merging into machines? Thank you. This is my case too. Ah. That I cannot answer just now. I haven't uh, worked uh, with that, uh, so I do not know. But it's not uh, it's not unlikely <clears throat> uh, because you meet these elemental beings and they have an effect on you. And I have thought several times that those who are captured in the machines, they sort of have been forced to work for us. They, they are first captured in the materiality of this world, and then they are forced into a machine. And even um, when you come into um, machines that work with the AI or um, virtual reality, it's even more, it's sort of a third uh, offer, a third um, crucifixion, <laughs> you might even say, of the elemental beings. And then it is very easy to feel these uh, feelings of the animals, the fear or the hate or the doubt. And it is so important then that you meet this uh, these feelings with the opposite, love, trust, and, and faith. Uh, that is what I can say at the moment, because this, these elemental beings that are trapped, you know, elemental beings feel trapped. They are trapped in the material world. And then we sort of re-trap them in in machines and we re re-trap them into uh, electronic devices 
uh, for example, cell phones, television, and then they they get sort of a little upset by this uh, misuse of, of them. So it's very important how we meet them. So work on trying to meet these elemental beings with uh, a love. Love is the most important. That is okay. my comment at that point. And if I may have one question. Yes. Uh, because I don't see them uh, at this moment. But no. I understand them that then that they are there. So can I it does does it have any effect when I uh, willingly uh, uh, what how to say it share or um, radiate my love towards them even I, even if I don't see them at that moment? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you thank so you very much. much. Um, Ari, we have two more people with raised hands. So are you able to answer? Yeah, I think I feel very well today. <laughs> okay, so dear friends, if you can be a little bit shorter than usual, let's say if you can ask a question for a minute and a half, it will be excellent. So, Lois is first. Lois, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I had, I was in the Toronto Circle, and I had very dark experiences there and seemed to be in the second elemental realm. And then when I went home, and was working after that, I had an experience and I, I wrote it down. So to be quick, it's better that I just read it. Um, and I'll show what I used to fade was this beautiful crystal that was given to me by a child uh, who was a student in my Eurythmy class in the YMCA. And it, it's really a beautiful crystal that I've treasured for 20 years maybe 25 years. I faded into a lovely and treasured quartz crystal that a five-year-old Eurythmy student gave me 20 years ago. After going through crystal portals, mineral open temple doorways with pediments at the top, experiencing quartz as a living reality, feeling a floor of quartz, I moved through halls of crystal, feeling changes in my body along the way. I entered the dark zone by being led into my breast tumor. Its hardness then appeared as coral shell formations, led into the active heart of the tumor, acting for protection. I went th through into a light portal, not mineral, but the same form, and there met not one but two figures. I recalled Ari's teaching of Vidar and Baldur, the one on the right was taller and the left smaller and more compact. I didn't see any details of them. They were just vague forms. Many changes then happened in my light body. Then between and behind them appeared a brighter figure of great love who sent into my consciousness all the people I have to send love to today. I've been following that. Oh, I. Then I traveled back. I think I haven't heard people talk about this, but it remind, reminded me of the mystery drama. I traveled back the way I came, rapidly passing through portals and back to the lights in the crystal and home. I set the crystal on the bedside table and began my day. So that was my experience. And since then, the love that I've been sending out to the people this figure listed the people I was to send love to. And one of them was my brother. And I just saw him this morning. Uh, we met at my door passing a, a, a package for my mother. And the the love between us was, uh, I've never felt it like that before. So it was really potent. That's it. I'll let, let that go. And thank you, Ari, for your training.
Sorry, any comments? <clears throat> no, I was just listening to the story that was it it seemed very realistic. No. Yeah, Lois, thank you so much for sharing. Uh Nick is next. Nick. Excellent. <clears throat> thank you again there. Uh, uh my question is quick. I really feel the the desire and urge to um I practice my Christianization maybe a half dozen to a dozen times a day. But uh I would really like to be as efficient as possible, specifically in rivers and trying to Christianize the the water in the river. It's always moving. I'm trying to catch it in pools where it stays for a bit or behind a dam where it stays. But I would really like Christ's love to infuse into all of the water that is all around Southern Ontario. And uh, I, I think about this often. And, uh, do you have any tips for trying to do this? No, you have to give me tips there. <laughs> I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> yes. Try different ways. Try different ways. I will. And farmer's fields is the other one. Like when I look at farmer's fields, I don't like to trespass. So I do it from the roads. But uh, is the plane like looking down directly onto the dirt? Or can I see the middle of the field and en encompass it into my mind and then bring the love there mostly just yeah, for it. You, you can as the, the last option you you mentioned there yes excellent excellent thank you very much hmm. thank you okay <clears throat> anthony uh, anthony you are muted anthony you are muted Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be very quick, but some years ago, a group of uh, four of us, five of us actually, uh, began to study VDAR, at least what Steiner had given in relation to VDAR. So this goes back to oh, probably 20, 2010, 2012, whatever. And in uh, around 2015, I, I decided to make a, a, a painting of VDAR in the Fenris Wolf. So maybe I could show it to you. I don't know if that's... Is it... Oh gosh, I'm not going to do this. Um, it's a little out of focus. Further yeah, away. Uh, here we are. There is better. Okay. Anthony is okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the, if you see it, Vidar and the, uh, and the wolf. Yeah. The Fenris wolf, yeah. Um, okay. So uh, what I'm hoping is that as time goes on, all right, that we can hear more about VDAR. Um, yes, yes, if possible. Yeah, yeah. There will be a new book now coming out just in a month or two about further teaching of VDAR. Wonderful. Thanks it's very much, all, Russ. It's already, it's already in, uh, in German, but uh, the English comes out uh, in a few months, two, two maybe, or three. Be looking mm -hmm. for it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Ari, do you have any Kindle version or electronic mm -hmm. uh, version of your books? I have no idea how you do that. <laughs> I think it's it makes sense to maybe you can publish it through Kindle too. Yeah, uh, but uh, but this is um, this is up to Sevak. He is the English publisher. I see. So he must decide that he is he owns the English translation, you might say. They translate it. So maybe he can do it from Kindle. I have been asked to do um, a, a, a verbal uh, reading of the books in English. Mm. Uh, from somebody and uh, I have th that I asked Sevak and he said that is uh, up to me to allow so I uh, said yes so maybe they can come in uh, like uh, Dale Brunscore have to do with Steiner that you can have them on on the net and listen to them for for free yeah 
you have incredibly good pieces on your Facebook, and I copy it into our uh, Telegram account. I think they are very substantial and really kind of uh, representing base of your north path of initiation. Oh. Yeah, so I think it will be very helpful. Yeah. I'm not saying so. Of course, it can be translated into Russian too. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's Why not? You can do that. <laughs> well, yes, uh, but you know, Russia. This is our future. Yes. Okay, so it's um, uh, raised hand from Jordan, and probably we can set our next time. Yeah, I have been looking at that. What about the twenty fourth of uh, February? Sounds good. Is it Saturday? Yes. February 24th. Yes, it's, it's great. And okay. how, does, how does one join the Telegram group? Um, I will send you invite. OK, thank you. So it's, uh, so I'm sorry, you are um, Nancy. Bonnie, let's say. Bonnie, you're my, yeah, mm -hmm. Bonnie. Okay, Bunny. I will. I can will I have send also? You... It, can I as well have an invite to Renee Plasky to a Telegram? Yeah. Thank you, Renee. You are on the list, so I will send it to the list Perfect. again. Thank you. Bunny. Thank you. So Thank we you. have two. We have Telegram and we have uh, Telegram chat. So, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I invited Ari too. So Ari, at least you can take a look what people are talking about. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, very short. Very short, yes. Um, all right, I was curious if you have been able to um, work with the gold and shift from east to west or have tried that, or is that something that is going to be individual? I have worked with that, yes. And um, is it through your will? Um, did they give you any certain ways that we are able to um, shift or... Um, through the intention and will, intentional will, yes. Do you do you enter the Christ as well, or is it already there because it's gold? <laughs> no, I go into the twelfth layer okay. of the earth. Okay, and then with will. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, dear friends, looks like we are done for today. Uh, please uh, feel free to unmute your machine and uh, say thank you to Ari. And I'll see you uh, in two months on um, February 24th, 11 a.m. Central Time, U.S. Canada. Thank you very much, Ari. Bye, Ari. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Please Bye. all come to the Telegram group. Thank <laughs> you for arranging it all. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you kindly. Bye. Thank you. Bob. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everybody. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Andre too. Camera is closed. Oh. Goodbye everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>